Snake is one of the classic games, and surprisingly, it's not that hard to build. So today I show how to build Snake in C++ and with the RM GUI. We start off with the plain simple app, which has nothing inside, so I can just show you. I built a prototype for the Snake app, and I'm just building it, and it shows up, and nothing is there. The first thing that we will do is uh, start by drawing the grid, because I personally like to see what I'm doing, um, and I also like to have at least a little bit of visual output, so everything else is a little bit easier. What we need to do here is, uh, in the update function, um, we need to just draw the grid. So what, uh, what we should be doing, we need to obviously uh, say how big the grid ne needs to be and also how big each cell needs to be. Since we will be drawing quite some stuff, it makes sense that uh, we abstract it away and don't, um, don't draw directly, but define a function which does it for us. At this point, I decided to go with the interface of um, having where to draw a cell and also the color of the cell and if it is filled or if it's not filled, because later the snake probably will be filled, but for the grid, um, uh, it would be nice to just have the outlines of the grid available. For the drawing, we need to calculate um, the positions of the outer points of the rectangle and we need to determine the color. And afterwards, we need to push it into the draw list of the IM GUI. And here this is what happened what is happening we have the color which is calculated of this vector of the color because i like this interface a little bit better to specify the color in rgb um, and the alpha value and here we access the draw list and then based if it's filled or it's not filled um, we add a filled rectangle or we add a non-filled rectangle and obviously on the call side we still need to specify uh, what now the color is. So we go here with the slightly grayish color and filled uh, is something that we at this point don't want to have because we just want to have the outline. So let's recompile and see where we add it up. And here we have the, the grid already in this slightly grayish color. Um, but let's make the grid size a little bit bigger or the cell size a little bit bigger. I think here I chose the grid size. I should have chosen the cell size. And now we have this nice grid here available. The next step is drawing the snake itself. So the snake will have a head and will have a tail. And for that I already have prepared quite a few things. First one is we have an enum, which is a direction, so we need to know where the snake is headed. And we have a point class, and that point class basically has the coordinates x and y. And we can move a point in space by using a particular direction. So if we move it left, then the x value will be decremented, and so on. Um, so this is basically the, the class that we will be using to implement the head and the tail of the snake. And the head and the tail of the snake needs to be stored in the, uh, in the data of the app class. So here we use a point for the head. And we use uh, the deek for um, the tail, which also consists of points. The good thing about the deke here is that we can put things at the front while removing things at the back. So this is exactly how the tail of the snake will work. 
So we will always put the first element into the tail and the last element we will just remove the tail as the snake is moving forward. Now we need to draw these two things as well. So the head and the tail. So we go back into our updating function uh, where we did draw the grid and we additionally draw um, the head and the tail. So the head is quite straightforward. Here we just choose some, uh, some yellowish color and for the tail we go through each element of the tail because it, it consists of all of the different points. And here we use a slightly um, a more um, transparent uh, yellowish color. And here we use the true flag to see that um, our snake is actually um, filled. So if we go here to the console and try to compile that one, we should now end up with the grid. And we additionally have here the first colored rectangle, which is the head of the snake. Um, and the head of the snake is um, in this yellowish color. But we need to move the beginning of the snake um, into the middle of the board. You don't want to start at the right, right? So this is what we will do now um, by using here the reset function. We could also do it here in the constructor, but uh, reset would make sense as if you want to reset the game that you start at the middle again. And here we can just say it will be grid size half. And the tail we clear in the reset function because we also don't want to um, have the tail if we reset the game. Then we recompile everything and now we should start in the middle of the, the grid. And this is where we are. This is our starting point. But right now nothing is really moving. So we need to implement the functionality to keep the snake moving. To achieve that, we need to add a few things to the update function. So first of all, we need to um, get some data of the DIM GUI um, framework, basically how long each frame took to be drawn, because we want that the, uh, that the snake is moving at a consistent speed. So we take into account the frame rate of our application. Um, so it, it looks consistent to the user. Additionally, we need to know in which direction we want to move the snake. So the code for that is uh, pretty much straightforward. Um, so here we, we have this, um, we fetch the IO, we get uh, the delta time. And if we are not in a game over uh, situation, we, so if we crashed into something, we use here to change the desired direction, which we will implement later. So at this point, we can just comment that one out. And we see the next move time and the delta time, um, which basically inside the next move time will be um, the, the time point stored at which the next move will happen. And as soon as we cross that one, um, we will basically um, make the move. And additionally, um, the time available for each move will decrease um, as soon as the, store, the score goes up. So if we catch more and more, um, we will see that the snake also gets, uh, gets a little bit faster. So it gets a little bit more difficult and so on. And inside here, we do actually move the snake. Um, in case the, the move time is not across the delta time, we basically just um, we, we don't make the move and we um, decrement the delta time as well. So the move snake function we need to implement and also the change to that direction we need to implement. But let's start with the move snake function. So for moving the snake, we need to um, put the head at the front of the tail and we need to move the head in the desired direction. So we need to add a desired direction which at the beginning could be something like um, left. So just to initialize it. Afterwards, we basically need to see 
uh, that we cut off the tail if we didn't actually um, collect one of the one of the targets. So we basically need another point uh, which we call the target. So here we would need to generate a new target um, because we have collected the old target. We need to increase the score. And if we didn't catch a target, um, we will reduce the size of the tail at the end again. Um, so we basically uh, keep the length of the tail uh, constant. The last thing in moving the snake is that we need to check for collisions and the, we need to check for the collisions with the tail and we need to check for collisions with the wall. And if either of those happen, we basically say that the game is uh, game over. And this is now what we're gonna do. The code for that is also pretty simple. Um, so here we just um, move through the complete tail and see if we find um, the position of the head where it currently is, which means that we would have collided. Or we go uh, through the grid size um, if the head is outside of the grid, and then we also call it game over. So let's compile and see how this currently looks like. So we still need to define here some uh, variables. This next, the time of the next move. And then we see that the snake is already moving to the left side. And here the game would have ended because it is outside of the grid. So let's now gather some inputs that we can actually control where the snake is going. The framework already, already provides us with some good functionality here. So we can just um, go into the key callback function and basically um, use the key that we want to use. So for instance, if I want to have here the A key, and the action is press, then I say that uh, the left key um, is actually true. And if the left key uh, is something that we need to have, we need to define it. It is a static function, so we need to define it basically outside here, uh, which means that here we need to initialize it with the correct value. And here we also need to define the left key. And then we need to say what should happen if the left key is pressed. And this is basically in, in the function that we had here at the beginning of the update. Here we had this change desired direction, which we now can uh, uncomment. And we will implement it um, in the private part of the, of the code which does the change of the desired direction in case one of our keys is pressed. So we can just say, um, so we can just say here, if left key, then we say left um, key is false. And we say that the desired direction is left. And this is now something that we need to repeat for every single key. So left, up, bottom, and right. And I'll just do it now. I have now implemented everything here for the desired direction. And now let's recompile and see how this actually looks like. So we should again start with the head in the middle. And it starts moving. And now by pressing the keys, I can define in which direction I want to move it. Right now there is no um, tail because I don't have collected any targets, but in theory also the tail should work. So let's start with generating some targets which we can catch. We already have the target um, here, at least defined, so we check for a collision of the head with the target, but right now it's not filled with anything. So if we collect the target, we want to generate a new one. And we also want to generate the new one in case we uh, reset our application. 
Um, and I think reset still needs to be called in. Oh no, it's already called. Um, so let's generate some targets and also draw the target because right now the target is not drawn. So even if there would be something, uh, we wouldn't even see it. So let's uh, do that right now. We want to draw the target. And for the target to be nicely identifiable, we use a nice green color. The target selection basically is, uh, consists of two parts. The first part is that I go through the complete grid and collect the points with which are currently not occupied. So not the hat is there and not the tail is there. And then out of all of these different um, possible target points, I use a random selector to um, select exactly one. And this is the new target point. So here I just move to the complete grid. So in the X direction and in the Y direction. And then I go through all of the tail and see that it's not inside the tail anywhere and that it's also not the current head of the snake. And if this is the case, it's a valid possible target. I push it back into the possible target list of points. And here I just return um, one of those randomly. And this is all the magic there is. Um, I don't want to bore you with the details of the random selector. Um, but it's basically just selecting exactly one element at random out of this target list. And here, let's recompile that. And now we should be already close to finish or maybe even finished. Let's see. So here we have now in green the target point. And as soon as I collect this target point, um, apparently the tail moves in a weird direction. We will fix that very soon. But the tail will get even longer um, if I collect more target points. But let's have a look at the drawing of the tail. Probably there is something a little bit weird. But in theory, it uh, was working, right? So here for L each element in the tail, and here we already have it. So this is uh, one wrong way round for the tail. Um, let's shortly recompile that one. And here we already go. So in green, I have the target and now the tail is also correctly attached to my snake. And every time I collect um, one of the target points, um, the tail gets one longer and the new target is randomly generated. And you see also that the more targets I collect, the faster the snake gets. And at some point I will probably crash into the wall and if I crash into the wall, the game stops because then the game over is triggered. So the only thing remaining here is that we could, for instance, draw the score. Um, but uh, right now I leave that as an exercise to you. So we're basically already finished. We can play probably one more round again. Um, and you see, it's not that hard to, to implement all of the different details. In fact, it's like 300 lines of code for a complete snake game. So which just shows that Using the right framework, this is uh, pretty straightforward. That is all that I have for you today. Um, Snake is definitely one of the classics and building it turned out to be far easier than I expected at the beginning. Um, if you have other games um, which are like old time classics or which might uh, be interesting to implement, post them in a the comment below. Um, other than that, I hope that you have a nice time um, learning something about C++ along the way. Um, and most importantly, as always, enjoy coding.